Hi, I'm Mark. Welcome back to Foothill Paint Fabrication. Well, we're getting really close to finishing off this firewall so I can weld it on Ruby, but uh, today we have to do one more piece of work. Last week, or last video, we uh, cut letters into the firewall. If you haven't seen that video, go back and watch it. It's pretty cool. Um, I'm really liking it, guys. The more I see this, I walk by her, and uh, I just love the way it looks. I think it's going to look really, really good. But we got to get the master cylinder for the hydraulic clutch on today. So hopefully it'll go really easy. But we do have a lot of modifications, a lot of uh, planning to do to get this in the right spot. Um, I've got a preliminary area marked right here. So let's jump in here and we'll take a quick look at what we can and can't do. And then uh, we're going to have to figure out how to get this thing on the firewall. Okay, so uh, the problem I have right here is I, I would really like to clock this Hydro Boost the opposite direction that's sitting right now. Now this is the normal installation, the way it would go, but you can clock it this way as well. It, this thing doesn't care. And this is the, uh, the reserve boost. From what I understand, there's a big spring in here and when it when you drive, it gets charged with pressure, and if you lose engine power, uh, then it gives you a couple of uh, pedal depressions, uh, boosted brake, uh, you know, before it runs out of juice. And uh, so I'd like to have on this side, that way I have more valve cover clearance and, you know, just more engine clearance. But um, um, I don't think we can make it go that way. This is the compact uh, master cylinder from Willwood. And it's, I think it's about the smallest one they make. So I don't think we can fit it in here, but we won't know that till we get the master cylinder installed. Uh, if we can fudge it over a little bit and make all this work, great. If we can't, uh, you know, we can't. So I'll have to clock the boost, uh, the hydro boost this way. So uh, that's gonna be figured out later, but we'll have it figured out by the end of the video, that's for sure. So let's go ahead and uh, check underneath the dash. I've kind of ever, got everything set up. And then we'll talk about what we need to do first, and we're gonna have to start cutting some old brackets off, and then we can start moving forward with uh, figuring out where exactly to drill the hole in the firewall to get that uh, master cylinder installed. Okay, I've got the clutch pedal in, and uh, as you can see here, I've got a little piece of plywood clamped right there. Now, there used to be you know, a little rubber bumper right there, and when the clutch came up, it would stop instead of banging in steel on steel, right? So, um, that little piece of plywood kind of represents the thickness of the rubber uh, bumper that was there. And the reason I have that is because I need to figure out where this pedal normally rests because we need to cut this clutch arm off. You can see right here, this piece comes over and it drops down and then that's right where the bumper rested, right here. And then this goes up underneath near the steering column and that's actually where the counter shaft or the shaft went down to the counter shaft to actuate the clutch. So this would rest here normally and then you'd step on the clutch and it would push down on that arm. Um, but we are cutting this piece off completely. We do not need it, it's just in the way. So now we actually have to fabricate a new positive stop so this clutch rests in just the right spot. Um, and really, I've driven a lot of GMA bodies. You, these pedals are in really good spot, so I want to reproduce it exactly. So what we're going to do is I'm going to get that clamped up. We'll make a reference mark where this, uh, the clutch pedal actually lands on the bracket here. And then, then we can remove the whole thing and go over to the bench and fabricate up uh, some new positive stop with the rubber uh, bumper on it. And then once we're done with that, then we can put it all back in and then start figuring out exactly where this master cylinder is going to go, you know, what our throw is, our stroke geometry and everything else. So uh, let's go ahead and let me get that marked up and I'll meet you back over at the bench. Okay, we got the brake pedal assembly up on the, in the vise so we can work on it really easily. I've got a, a little block in here, wedge this in the up position. So what I think my first thing to do, instead of trying to keep hitting the same line every time, I'll weld, uh, I'll just tack a piece of steel on here that holds this pedal on this side so we can go ahead and remove the clutch arm and drill out the spot welds. Now, uh, this pedal is quarter inch thick, it looks like, and this is at least 3 16 so that was one heck of a spot welder that was able to uh, spot weld that clutch arm on there. So I'd like to get that out of the way, but let me get a block over here, a piece of square tubing, and I'll just tack it on here so it holds it. That way we can remove uh, back and forth and we always know it's landing in the right spot when we work on the other side for our positive stop. But let me bust that out and I'll be right back. 
Okay, piece of angle iron worked out perfect. Got a nice positive stop right there. So let's go ahead and pull the, the pedal assembly off. And uh, what we'll do is we'll go over the drill press, see if we can drill those uh, spot welds out, try to get that arm off nice and easy. But uh, either way, it's gotta come off there. Okay, that arm did not wanna come off. I had to drill the holes bigger and take it to the other vise and really beat the crap out of it. Those two spot welds were serious. I'm telling you what, man, I, I didn't, I thought it was gonna bend this arm, I was hitting it so hard. But we got it cleaned up, a couple of divots there, no worries, it's not gonna weaken it at all. So the next step is figuring out how to make a stop. So I, off camera, I went ahead and built this, it's just a piece of angle iron. And it's gonna go about like that. And you can see the gap there, and that's for this rubber bumper. So it's just one, you know, you kind of drill a hole and poke it through. And so if, originally I thought, well, I'll just drill a hole and have it rest, have the pedal hit it, you know, cause it's about a quarter inch wide. And I thought, well, you know, eventually it's probably gonna crush that cause it's a smaller area. So I think what I'll do is just get a little plate and weld it on here so we have a f big flat surface. So this can, you know, hit like that. And all I have to do is move that inboard a little bit, just like that. And so it kind of hits a nice flat surface every time. So let me go ahead and take care of that off camera and I'll get this in place. We've got to drill a hole for the little thing to pop through. I'm going to take care of all that. And then we can get to what we really need to is figure out the geometry for that new clutch master cylinder. So I'm going to bust this out and we'll be right back. Okay, we got that welded on nice and smooth. It's cooled off so we can start uh, figuring out the next step. And uh, I went ahead and got the little rubber bumper. I got drilled the hole and got that in place. And it fits right up in here, just like that. So it's gonna work out really good. I'll clamp this and just throw a couple small tacks on it just for now. We'll do the full weld once we're completely done. You don't wanna do full welds till you know everything's just right. And I'll probably need a return spring on this clutch to hold it up against this bumper, keep it nice and quiet. Uh, so what we'll do is whatever, uh, you know, pin or whatever we use to connect to the master cylinder rod, we can put a tab back here and possibly hook onto that or something, but that's probably the last thing to figure out. So let me go ahead and get this done and I'll meet you back up underneath the dash. We'll get all this back up underneath there and then we can start uh, figuring out the geometry. Okay guys, we got the stop. It's all set. It's working really good. You can see right here I have a magnet and it's just sticking out of the arm and that's kind of my proposed spot for the rod uh, to connect the master cylinder. So what we're gonna do is use this square, and I've got some tape on there so I could put Sharpie marks on it, but we're gonna hold that because that uh, master cylinder will be 90 degrees uh, to the firewall, and I'm not gonna do a recess or anything. We're gonna just gonna put it at a slight angle. And then we're gonna move the pedal back and forth and put marks on here. What we ultimately need is an inch and a quarter stroke. So we need, you know, obviously more than an inch and a quarter stroke. So we'll be zero here. And when we go all the way down, you know, to the floor or to the stop, we want maybe, you know, inch and three eighths, uh, you know, around there. So we have a little bit more throw of the pedal than we do master cylinder, you know, and then we can adjust it. And if we need to put a stop back here for the pedal arm, so it hits just right, so it doesn't bottom out the master cylinder, that's easy. All right, guys, I've got it. Uh, I think I've got it. So uh, that's zero right there. You can see the line. And then the first mark is an inch, inch and a quarter, and then it keeps going. That's inch and three eighths, and then that's inch and a half. So uh, down here, you can see there's a block of wood taped to the firewall. And that's basically represents the sound deadening, the jute backing, and then the carpet. So I don't know if it's going to be three quarters of an inch thick, but it'll be fairly thick. And so that the pedal will hit the hit that. So that gives me a little bit more. I only need an inch and a quarter, a little under an inch and a quarter. So if I have a little bit more and I put a stop down here, perfect. You know, I'd rather have too much than not enough. So I think this is going to work out this location. So what I need to do is mark that magnet on the rod here. So that's right where the rod would come out. And then, then we got to start figuring out where on the firewall we need to drill that hole to uh, put the, the master cylinder through. Okay guys, I got a piece of aluminum welded rod uh, stuck into the pedal. I drilled a small hole. So we're looking really good as far as our throw, but we're running into other problems. So uh, let's go look at the uh, front of the firewall. All right guys, I don't know if you can see, but I've got uh, like a cross and chalk right here. And that'd be about the center of the hole for the master cylinder, the clutch master cylinder. So, so I could figure out what I was doing and you know, everything else. Uh, you guys notice I have the wiper motor on here. And uh, so, you know, you got to think ahead. You can't just stuck, stick stuff on there and hope it clears later. So I made a little cardboard uh, 
I don't know, profile of the master cylinder and it goes right about like that. So you can see uh, it's, it's going to be tight. Um, and that's if I run this wiper motor. Now, I don't want to run this wiper motor. I want to run something else. What I, ideally, what I want is to have the motor inside the wiper cowl. Um, I'm pretty sure I can do it. Um, well, I can make it work no matter what. I'll make it work. But what I'd like to do is not have this here and weld that hole in, you know, so it's nice and clean all the way across here. But, uh, you know, we, that would eliminate this problem. But then this thing starts climbing up, and this is a little template of the flange of the master cylinder. And if I put it there, now one of the bolting, uh, bolt holes actually ends up in through right where I'll be welding this into the cowl. So we would actually have to weld a trap nut on the other side so it could bolt to it. So one would bolt out here, the other one would bolt directly into the firewall. So um, there's a few struggles there, and so I'm having to think about it. Now let's go back underneath the dash, and uh, I have another idea, which is a lot more complicated, and uh, it could work if I wanted to put in the time and effort. Okay, the other idea is to mount the mass cylinder underneath the dash. I would have to make a counter shaft, and uh, the, the, this master cylinder would be right up against there. It'd be hard to put fluid in, hard to check it, everything else. And I'm not a fan of that. That's what I originally want to do when I dreamt all this up. But um, it's, you know, you can do a remote reservoir master cylinder. You can do a lot of different things. But um, I, I really don't want to go down that path. And then it's going to clog up underneath the firewall here. I have to run air conditioning vents. I have, you know, wires to run. I got a lot of the stuff that's going to go up in here and I want it tucked up inside. I don't want to hang it down so it shows. So I'm not I'm not liking this idea. Could I make it work? Yes, but uh, I think it just complicates things. I don't need to make uh, the space shuttle. You know, this is a GTO. So I think we're going to go for the firewall. We're going to uh, go ahead and figure out the height where I need to drill the hole. We're going to be over probably two inches from this uh, brake pedal. So we're going to have to build some sort of strong stanchion that sticks out. Uh, and then we can put a clevis and, uh, you know, get the, the mass cylinder onto it. So. Um, let's, uh, let's just assume we're going on the outside and we'll move forward from there. All right, guys, you can see we've got, uh, the flange, a little, my paper, a little template up here held up with a magnet and uh, we've got some lines. So that's the center right there where the master cylinder would go. So I drilled a hole from the inside. Uh, so I make sure my hit my lines almost perfect. So, uh, everything's working out as far as that goes. So here's my little template, uh, my little mock-up. And if I hold it up, that's pretty much where it's going to go. And uh, it's, it's a lot higher than I want. Uh, I'm sure it clears the brake booster and it's the easy way to go because that gives us the inch and a quarter stroke we want. But I don't like it. I don't like it up there. Um, it, you know, and it's, it complicates my windshield wiper situation. It's if I need to go to a factory one that's on the outside here, I don't know if I can put one on the inside yet. I've, there's some kits, but they're like $1,000 and I don't really care much for the kit. Um, and, uh, you know, I just don't like it up here. So what I'd really like is to move it down here, but that obviously complicates everything up here is easy. All we do is uh, cut a hole, saw hole, drill some holes, weld a nut back there, you know, and mount it and, you know, just make the mount to the shaft or to the pedal, excuse me, but I don't like it up here. Uh, the fenders right here, that's no problem. We'll have no problem other than the windshield wiper motor situation. But if I move it down here, it frees everything up. It gives me all kinds of options right here. I can do anything I want. It moves it down lower, closer to the booster. It cleans up this area, but it complicates everything. I mean, uh, if, if I drilled a hole and hooked it on the pedal right there, I'd have probably three inches of stroke or two and a half inches of stroke, way more than we need. And uh, so I have to build a counter shaft up underneath there so we can adjust the stroke to this master cylinder. So, I don't, I don't know if I want to go easy or if I'm, if I'm going to go hard. Uh, so, uh, yeah, give me, a, give me a few minutes to think about this, and uh, I'll, I'll bring you back when I have a decision. Okay. I'll give you one guess how we're going to go, easy way or hard way. I <laughs> uh, should have known. I, I shouldn't even have pondered doing the easy way. Uh, I don't know what's wrong with me. But uh, 
So I resurrected the old uh, mock-up firewall. I had to add on to it because it wasn't long enough the pedal was hitting the bottom. So I had to weld some rust to rust to get this to work, but it's standing and that's all it's got to do. So uh, got the pedal assembly in. It's right where it belongs and I basically moved all the dimensions over from the real firewall to this one. Drilled a hole, mounted the clutch master cylinder where it's going to go. Basically, its center line is going to be the center line of the, the brake uh, uh, booster as well. So those will be on center. Um, it just worked out that way, but it's, uh, it's going to work out better, I think, in the long run. So now, if, I, if we just connected right here, we'd have three and a half inches of stroke. I just measured it, which is, you know, uh, uh, almost three times what we need. So uh, the, what we're going to need to do is mount a shaft, uh, mount something here or across here that uh, we can hook from here to that shaft and then um, I can use the geometry to get it to reduce down here. Now uh, I'm not going to bore you guys with how I'm going to figure this out and how we're going to make it work. I'm going to have to sit down with pencil and paper and uh, do some math and then I may have to call my son to help me but uh, we're going to have to figure this out then we can start doing some mock-ups with stir sticks or whatever I've got to see, make sure, you know, whatever calculations I've done are correct. But uh, yeah, um, there's a little, bit of, a little bit of work to be done here, but uh, it's totally doable. It's just, uh, you just got to figure it out. All right, guys, been a little bit since uh, you last saw this. A lot of stir sticks have died to get to where we're at right now, but I think we're very close to getting this figured out. So uh, I've done a lot of research, uh, a lot of uh, calculating, trying to figure this out. And there's a lot of information on what you want for ratio for a hydraulic clutch. And it, basically everybody agrees you need to be right around six, uh, six to one. Now, um, but the problem is none of these guys really talk about stroke. I mean, it's great, you know, I can get six to one easily, but what happens if you can't put your master cylinder right where you get the right amount of stroke for six to one? And that's my problem right now. So, uh, so what I did was uh, I, I put a, I welded a little piece of all thread onto the clutch arm and that gives me a pivot point right here. And that's actually 8.27 to one, which is too high, way too high, but we need to re we're going to actually reduce that a little bit because of this one is actually going to subtract from this one because it's going the other way. So. Uh, this one comes out to about 1.89 to 1. So you subtract uh, that into that and we get about 6.38 to 1, which is the ratio, pretty close to the ratio we want from everything I've read. Now, that uh, then when we come down here, that gives us about an inch and a half of stroke. Now, this master cylinder has an inch and a quarter stroke. So I need to tweak it a little bit. We don't want to bottom out that master cylinder. It can't be good for it to bottom that thing out. So um, we're, we're going a little deep, but I think the pedal is going to stop. And of course, this is just a fake mock-up. Once we get it in the car, then I'll be able to tell for sure what our stroke is. And I don't have to have the master cylinder in there to do that. It's just a distance from start to bottom out on, at, at this point right here. So I think the next step is to get this into the car and um, kind of set this back up again and then see what our stroke is, see if everything's working out. Then we can st actually start building what we need to build to make this a reality. So let me, uh, let me get this into the car uh, and then we'll, I'll meet you back over there and we'll see how it works actually in the car. Okay guys, I hope I got a decent angle here for you. It's really hard to get the camera in here. So I've got tape measure right and you can see it, we're, it's up against a stop here and that's right about three and an eighth. I just right where this stir stick is touching. So we'll go forward to two and an eighth, and that'll be an inch of stroke. And then we go forward to two, and that'll be an inch and an eighth. Then one more eighth, that'll be inch and a quarter. And then the pedal bottoms out at inch and three eighths. So we got inch and three eighths stroke. So I'm feeling really good about that. Uh, obviously we don't want to bottom out that master cylinder, but I can always put a positive uh, stop back here somewhere if it comes to that and I want it to feel right so um, so fingers crossed I uh, I did my math right so let's go ahead and take this off and it's time to start manufacturing some real parts all right I got a head start on making parts uh, I got to get this done so the first thing I did 
I went easy and I added a boss onto, you see curves right here. So I welded a boss onto here and then I've drilled a hole right at that pivot point. That's a little tiny hole just to get me a pilot because this is at an angle. It's kind of hard to get the drill to go through straight. So uh, what's going to happen here is I think we're going to have a heim joint attached here and go over to that first lever. So the second thing I did was figure out about, you know, how I want to make this. So what I have back here, it's hard for you guys to see, but that's a piece of quarter inch and I've drilled a hole all the way through five eighths. So I've got a piece of five eighths solid on here. And then uh, what I've got inside of it is a piece of three eighths rod. So this will be welded all the way around here and on the backside, the ground flush. And then uh, this three eighths rod will go in just like that. And that'll be welded on the backside as well. Now remember this is gonna bolt on so I can actually drill and tap this and bolt it from the inside and that should work. This plate you see on top here will weld to that. And since there's gonna be forces pushing this way, that will stop it from doing that. Plus quarter inch, plus five eighths. So it's, it's not gonna move. Um, so that'll weld onto that. And so that'll secure the mounting to the brake uh, pedal assembly. Then, uh, you know, to get this all to transfer, I've got a piece of uh, thick wall tubing right here. I've bored out to half inch, so I've got a, a half by three eighths bronze bushing in here. There'll be another one on the other side. So that's gonna slide on here like this. So let me change the camera angle and then I'll show you how the rest is gonna work. All right, got you swung around so you can see what's going on. So the heim joint will go from here to a lever on here, the same distance as that stir stick in our mock-up. And when it pushes, it will rotate it just like that, all right? And then that twisting force will be transferred over to another arm that goes to the master cylinder. Uh, not very complicated, just getting the links and everything right is the hard part. So uh, let's go ahead and get started on this arm right here. We're gonna have to make the arm the right length, make a little cutout so it'll weld on here real nice and uh, line it up for the side of this. So let's, uh, let's go bust one of those out real quick. All right, I was looking for some material to make these arms out of, and I just recently rebuilt my boat trailer axle, actually a new axle, and I rebuilt all the spring shackles and the bushings and everything, because it it, the thing was built in 54 or 52 or something, so it was due. And I saved the old uh, spring shackles. So what, uh, what we're gonna do here is just repurpose this. So both sides had the same size hole. All I did was run a step bit through there, open it up so this tube will slide through. So it'll be like that. It's a little sloppy, but once we weld it on there, we'll be a gold. Um, it is thicker than I'd like, but uh, it's gonna actually kind of work out because I can drill and tap this and put you know, the heim joint bolt on there instead of pinning it or whatever. So that'll actually be a plus in the long run. So this piece here, is the linkage arm, you know, member from our mock-up. So what we need to do is figure out the center from this hole, center to that hole, and just put that over here on this arm, then cut this to length, shape it, and then, uh, then we're pretty good, you know. So uh, let's go ahead and I'll get this measured out. We'll get a hole drilled in here, and we'll get this cut to shape. Okay, I got some work done off camera. I got this piece of quarter inch right here, drilled and tapped for quarter 20. It's bolted from the inside. And then I also uh, made a couple of weldable nuts for this plate right here. You can see them right there. And uh, I wanted to get everything bolted into place before I tacked it. I don't want to tack it together, or weld it together, then try to you know line up holes and drill holes and everything else. So all the holes are drilled. So then we just bolt it and then now I can tack it in place. Once we weld it, put it back on, it should go right back in the same spot. Now granted, it would be a lot easier, <clears throat> excuse me, just to weld all this on. But like I said earlier, I don't know if this is gonna work. So I want to be able to remove it. The clutch arm can be removed. This will be able to be removed. And you know, if it doesn't work, it's not a huge deal. It's, it'll be a deal, but it won't be a huge deal. So let's go ahead and get these tacked and then we'll move on to our next steps.
Okay, I got it all welded up and it's looking really good. I got the uh, weld on nuts on there and then I got this welded really uh, good across here. Uh, that big fillet doesn't matter because the way they stamp that brake pedal assembly, it rolls right through here, so it's not going to be a big deal. So once it cooled off, I bolted it onto the assembly, and then I, what I did was I uh, put a rod through where the brake pedal and the clutch arm go, and then I trued this tube up to that so they're both on the same plane um, and hopefully square. So that's good to go because I only have one little tack on there right now. So what I need to do is I need to get a couple of tacks on there to freeze that in position because I did bend it till it matched exactly what it needed. And then um, I've got this little piece right here and that's going to go in here as well. And that'll slide in and be welded in as well. So uh, that way it keeps this uh, tube from trying to walk back and forth or flex at all. So I'll do that off camera. Um, it should only take a minute. I just want to tack it, make sure it doesn't move, and then get this tacked in, and then kind of double check it, and then get it welded up, and then this piece will be done. Okay guys, we got that part all welded up and bolted in so it's right where it belongs, so we can move on to the next step. So I went ahead and drilled and tapped the clutch pedal arm. Uh, for 5 16 and then I did the same thing on the counter shaft, put a couple of heim joints on here. So this is connected. It's a little floppy because we're not welded here, but this is basically the action you're going to see when you're pushing the clutch. So uh, now this twisting force has to be transferred down to the master cylinder. So I, uh, I planned on making some sort of bell crank that went around here, but I was digging through my stuff and I found this. So uh, believe it or not, I actually drilled the hole out to fit over the tube here, but uh, this is a lock for aluminum irrigation pipe that I have in the pasture. Um, I had a, a couple of these laying in my junk uh, drawer, junk pile. So that's gonna slide on here like this, and ultimately it will have a clevis that connects these two together. Now the clevis isn't in yet. It'll be here tomorrow, I believe. So we'll have to pick this up tomorrow. And uh, I don't, I don't want to tack anything together, tack these arms onto the shaft until we get like everything pieced together and make sure it works just like the stir stick model did. So uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow when that clevis comes in. Okay guys, next day and I got a message late this morning that all the parts I ordered uh, were going to show up except the one I really needed right now, which is the clevis. So I went ahead and just made one. Uh, I'm not entirely sure the one I ordered was going to be short enough anyways, so I made one. So where we're at right now, I went ahead and tacked this arm on. So it is mounted and the heim joints are connected, so we're good there. So the next step is to line this up, this arm right here, perfectly centered with the master cylinder. And then uh, pull this back and then get that tacked. So, and then we can do a little bit of testing, see if we get the inch and a quarter stroke or just slightly bigger than inch and a quarter stroke we want. And then, uh, then we'll know we got all the links and everything right. Now I drilled the hole for this and everything else. There was really no way. I just went off the stir stick model that I had drilled and done a bunch of, you know, mock up with. So I have to trust that stir stick model was right. And, uh, that when I tack this up, it's going to be right. So, uh, let me go ahead and take care of this. I want to cut this tube shorter and then get all this on. I'll get it tacked on. I'll bring you right back and we'll do a little testing. Measure if this goes in and out, inch and a quarter. All right, guys, got it all tacked together. Put a double tack on these. They were wanting to move this way a little bit just with a little baby tack on there, but we're looking really good. We may be just a little bit short on the stroke. I'm not sure, but I can lengthen this. Lengthening this one and shortening it actually affects the stroke down here. So, uh, I won't know until we get it in the car, but we're very, very close. And it looks like uh, we may be sweeping a little deep right here, but when we drill the hole for the master cylinder, I can go just a skosh, maybe an eighth deeper, uh, lower, and it will uh, make up that difference. So I think we're looking pretty good. Let's put this sucker in the car. I'm getting tired of messing with this thing. All right, all that work to drill one hole in a firewall. I can't believe it. I hope I got this right. Here we go. All right, let's get that thing mounted. Got to drill a couple of mounting holes here, hook it up and test it. Okay, all that work and all that brain power expended just to mount that little master cylinder on the firewall with 
the hydro boost in this uh, position. And we are close, very close, not touching, but very close with it clocked this way. I can always flip it over, um, but I have options and that's a good thing. And uh, it looks good. I like it, it's not up too high and uh, it's gonna work. That's all that matters really. So let's go underneath and <laughs> take a look at my masterpiece up underneath there. Okay, there it is. Works like a champ, just like we planned. Got the exact stroke you need, everything. Now, of course, the firewall is not welded in or anything like that, but and I haven't finished welding and everything, but it is working, and the stroke's working out. So, stir stick strike again. Pretty happy to get this done. It's been a journey. All right, guys, that pretty much wraps up this video. And I kind of remember a guy that looks a lot like me wearing a shirt just like this. It says Mark on it at the beginning of this video saying something about this one is going to be easy. Uh, how wrong was he, huh? So we got it in. The linkage uh, seems to be working out really good. The strokes right on the money. And it actually feels pretty good pushing with my hand on the clutch uh, pedal. So pretty happy about that. We do have clearance to the Hydro Boost. Uh, it is kind of tight. I'm gonna have to make sure, you know, obviously when this, the panel's all welded in, things may move. So uh, we're gonna have to keep an eye on that. Obviously I don't want them banging into each other, but it's looking really good right now. So uh, fingers crossed it all works out when we hook it up to the clutch and everything else, it feels just right. But I think we're gonna be okay. Thanks for joining me here at Foothill Paint Fabrication. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already. Mash that bell and drop me a comment. I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you on the next one.